The 48th GST Council meeting has recommended that certain offences under Section 132 of the Central Goods and Services Tax Act 2017 will be decriminalised. Under the present GST law, there are two types of penalties. Monetary fines can be imposed and goods seized for violating statutory provisions. Tax authorities can impose these penalties. The GST law also provides for criminal penalties, including imprisonment. But that can be only awarded by a criminal court. So what are the steps recommended at the latest meeting? The first one is decriminalizing offences such as obstructing or preventing officers from doing their duties, deliberately tempering with material evidence and failure to supply information. Uh, there's a provision in the Act that provides that there are certain scenarios that you're deemed to be liable to prosecution. And the scenarios include where you raise a fake invoice, or you're, you're actually not made a supply but raise an invoice to trade credits or where you have actually evaded tax in some sense and uh, collected tax and not paid to the government. So those uh, particular scenarios anywhere in the world would trigger uh, penalties and prosecution as well. In this prosecution provision, we had three entries, one that talked about tampering of evidence, obstructing the duty of an officer, and not providing information that was also in the category of prosecution. So what this did was that it made a situation where a company, if it fell under this category, it triggered the prosecution provision where a commissioner approval was required and then you would have a, a potential arrest. And depending on the category for these three categories, it was bailable, but needless to say, when it's so subjective, it was a, not necessarily a welcome provision. So with these three entries out of the way from the prosecution provision, I do think there are a lot of other provisions that will take care of penalties. So it's not that this will let companies do whatever they wish, but I do think it will at least remove that fear and ambiguity around when a prosecution will be invoked. For these three scenarios, you would have to follow the Code of Criminal Procedure and the IPC, but the good news is the three scenarios are now done away with. The second recommendation is doubling the minimum threshold of tax amount for launching prosecution from 1 crore rupees to 2 crore rupees, except for the offence of issuing invoices without supplying goods, services or both. The third one is reducing the compounding amount from the present range of 50 to 150 percent of the tax amount to a range of 25 to 100 percent. According to online tax filing website ClearTax, compounding of offences is a method used to avoid litigation. When a case is being tried in a criminal court, the accused has to appear before it at every hearing represented by an advocate. With compounding, the accused is no longer required to appear personally and can be discharged on the payment of a compounded fee. Till now, the amount payable for compounding was 50% of the tax involved, subject to a minimum of 10,000 rupees. The maximum amount for compounding was 150% of the tax or 30,000 rupees, whichever was higher. I think they are reducing the seriousness of the offence uh, in the sense that uh, for you, so no compromise on the basic amount, no compromise on the, any interest or penalties, but uh, whatever is uh, due payable in lieu of prosecution, that will get uh, reduced. So that's how the compounding works. There was news for automakers and car buyers too. Saturday's GST Council meeting also came out with a clear definition of SUVs that would attract the highest cess of 22% over and above the GST rates applicable on motor vehicles. The higher rate of compensation cess of 22% will apply to any motor vehicle that fulfills four conditions. The vehicle is popularly known as an SUV. It has an engine capacity exceeding 1,500 cc. It has a length exceeding 4,000 mm and it has a ground clearance of 170 mm or above. The clarification could result in changes in the prices of certain SUV models. However, automakers are still looking into the details of the clarification. The Society of Indian Automobile Manufacturers has welcomed the clarification on the definition of SUVs, saying that it was on the lines of its discussion with the Finance Ministry. In India, SUVs have seen a big jump in their demand in recent years and are slated to drive automakers to record sales this year. 
what could be the reason why CM has welcomed it is because a lot of sedans uh, fulfill some of the uh, uh, some of the conditions. So there are four conditions which have been laid down in the definition of an SUV, uh, which was uh, uh, which have now been reiterated. Whether these were all or and conditions was something which was a subject of dispute. And there is a uh, there is an including definition. So uh, this is an including definition, and whether this was creating a restrictive effect or whether it was expanding the uh, the definition that was also being uh, talked about. So litigation or disputes were being created where even those uh, vehicles which we do not normally understand as SUVs were being asked to pay duty uh, uh, compensation says at a higher rate. This would take away that ambiguity and only SUVs will, which fulfill all the four conditions simultaneously and uh, uh, fall in that category would accordingly be liable to pay a higher uh, compensation says. So it's a very welcome move and I think uh, the higher rate would only apply to genuine SUVs. So I do not see any cost uh, factor coming in or any of the SUVs getting any cost layer. The FM also very categorically reiterated that there is no new levy or this will, should not create any a new levy. It's only a clarification. The meeting on Saturday was held after a gap of six months, but the GST Council could not address some of the important agendas like establishing a GST appellate tribunal and the tax treatment for online gaming, tobacco and good car. All of this indicates that the government may have taken its foot off the pedal as far as making the indirect tax regime more effective. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.